Okay, um, so the main concept of this video today is we're going to be taking um, the current old fluorescent lighting in here and upgrading it to, well, we already did as you can see, but this is going to be the concept of the video. So we're going to see how we install this and what the general process is. Uh, now the lights themselves, uh, they're 40 watts a piece, which is pretty comparable both in size and wattage to like a, a T8 fluorescent tube. Um, but there's a few notable advantages in these styles of lights. Uh, namely, um, the pricing for this install is actually quite affordable. These are available on Amazon with a pack of 10 costing 170 Kanakistan Kopecks, or rather 120 US dollars, which um, was one of the challenges when I was initially looking into LED lighting, was going to the Home Depot or other brick and mortar stores, uh, the lighting always seemed to be kind of unreasonably expensive. Uh, so I found that by going on Amazon, you can often find um, LED lighting in particular for, sorry, 30% less or so compared to uh, big box stores. So this was quite an affordable project. Um, the efficiency. So when talking about efficiency, uh, typically uh, figures of lumens per watt are used. So that's amount of light per energy. Um, traditional fluorescent tubes, the better tubes will produce around 75 lumens per watt. And that's when they're new, but they still degrade over time. Uh, whereas LEDs, uh, generally the better LEDs are around 130. In this particular case, these are 120 uh, lumens per watt. So that's about a 50 or more percent improvement over uh, fluorescent lighting. Uh, another big advantage is the lifespan. So over the lifespan of the lights, um, they do not degrade whatsoever. Uh, one day they'll just stop working, whereas a fluorescent light will lose its quality over time. Uh, in this case, uh, there is no manufacturer quoted lifespan, which I find to be a bit bizarre, um, but they seem like good quality lights and they run uh, cool to the touch more or less. So I'm expecting that they should perform in line with similar LEDs, uh, which would be around 50 to possibly 100,000 hours, which would be about six to 12 years of 24 seven operation, um, which is quite impressive in comparison to the old tubes. Uh, now cold starts, whilst not being a problem in more Southern climates like the United States, uh, can be an issue up here if it's a real cold day in the garage and you go to flip the switch the fluorescent lights might take a whole minute to heat up especially if they're uh, getting older whereas leds with these that's never a problem you just flip the switch and they're on like that uh, and lastly uh, it's not only the amount of light or how efficient they are or the pricing uh, but the quality of the light is significantly improved uh, standard uh, Fluorescent lights have a, a metric of around 60 to 70 for the CRI or color rendering index. Uh, just know that that's basically how accurately colors are portrayed. So like for instance, the old um, street lights, the orange ones, the low pressure sodiums, uh, you'll notice that when you're driving under those, you lose your color vision entirely. Um, so those are a very low score. Fluorescents are around 60 to 70 and most LEDs start at about 80. These particular lights are quoted at 85, which is pretty good. Um, the best possible source would be uh, incandescent or the sun, and that would be at 100. So 85 is a pretty decent score for LEDs, and certainly a big improvement over nearly any fluorescent tube you would be able to find. Uh, so, one of the things I forgot to mention I do like the flexibility of the potential installation options. Uh, in the package, they actually provide quite a few options for wiring solutions. Uh, the package contains uh, five traditional five-foot power cords with power switches, eight of these four-foot joining cables, ten direct connectors, and ten hardwire connectors. Uh, so there is a lot of flexibility for installing them however you want. Whether you want to plug them in in several locations, hook them all up in a row, or hardwire all of them, they provide enough connectors to do almost all of it. As for actual mounting solutions, 
Um, they did include 30 brackets, so three per light, but I honestly found that two was quite enough. Um, okay, so one of the interesting things to tackle, uh, which is dependent on the situation that um, you would be in, would be the placement. Um, so that's kind of particular. In this case, uh, this garage is uh, 20 uh, by 20, so about 400-ish square feet. And the placement we kind of went through is we wanted something that looked um, good and was kind of equal. So we'd have consistent performance in various areas of the garage. Uh, so we decided to go with three rows of three, which actually left us with an extra out of the 10 pack. But uh, in that case, that's okay because there's no other way to kind of have it all be equal. So we have a row on the wall there and we spaced those out back about um, three feet or so from the wall. So it's kind of a challenge of um, if we place it too far from the wall, then we don't get adequate lighting on the upper kind of shelves. And if we place it too close, then a lot of the light will get wasted on the walls. So we found that around three feet was about the right marker for that. And then we've got all these equidistant rows here. Uh, the garage door opener proved to be a bit of a problem, but we just kicked it to the side a bit and ended up with something that was um, pretty consistent. So the placement is a little bit particular, but in our case, uh, this is kind of what worked out. All right, so we have this line made here. Um, I don't think we'll be talking too much about the measuring because that's kind of personal to your situation. But once you know where you want the lights to go, um, drill a hole for, for the brackets. Uh, we're gonna be drilling these two and a half inches away from the end here. So I just marked a hole here. So we bought a, uh, a drywall anchor kit. You won't need to do this if you're drilling into studs. I'm going to do this up right under the light here. Easy peasy. So because we're installing into drywall, you need these drywall anchors here. And these are just simply press fit. So once you have the hole drilled, you can just go ahead Push them on in there, tap it in until it's flush. Get a bracket here, easy. Then you get a screw, fit through the bracket. And simply screw up into the drywall. There, and that's on there now. Once we have these lights here, we peeled off the plastic. And the brackets are all installed. Now the hard part is now finished. So I just simply come along here and if these things are reasonably aligned, you can kind of just, you put it in on an angle like this, and then you just pop the other end in like that. And we're good. It's mounted now. So it's uh, kind of floating. It looks like you can't really see uh, the mounts are there and that's stable. Kind of starting the side, da, and click like that. So that's it. Okay, so now we got to connect these two lights together. Um, so for that, uh, if these were butted right up against each other, I'd use the small connectors. But instead, I'm going to be using these cables with a length of four feet. Uh, in this case, it's a little bit longer than what we need. That's fine because we can just zip tie it up. Plug one in, in, and then we'll plug in the other here. And it's a pretty tight fit, but that's good, so it will never come out. Then I'm just gonna fold this up in the middle here. Get a zip tie. We only have a little bit extra. So now, snip off the extra. Now these aren't necessarily the right tools for the job, but they'll do. So let's pop this up here. This little cable holder, a couple nails on it. Let's give it a couple taps. The old thumb detector. And, and finish it off. There, that's one cable. Now we gotta go do the rest. So um, next up is we 
got all these done. So now we're gonna actually do the ends of each individual row. So we took one of the fixtures out of the ceiling over there and we're gonna tap into its power to power these three rows. So right now I'm just gonna make a cable that goes in between these lights. We'll be utilizing three of these end plugs here. And we'll just tin these. And the reason why I'm doing that is so these have some structural rigidity because we're gonna be using these connectors right here. And I like these because you can get them in anything from like two to five connections. And they're simply push fit. So all you do is you take your wire here and you just push it in. Doesn't work with these wires too well, but it'll still do the trick. And then once it's in there, it's actually got these little retaining clips. So you should shove it in like that. And then this mechanism here will clamp down because it's got these springs and it will not want to come out. It'll only go in essentially. So now we'll take this piece of cable here and we'll insert that solid core copper. It's in there. That's a connection made. So now we're going to do the other two connections. So we've got all of our connections here. So we'll just plug this in and we'll get down to business. Um, okay, so with the wiring finished, we did our three rows with the connectors in the middle here. And uh, we were left on the ends with three rows, each without power. So obviously I used the connectors here, the end connectors, and spliced them all together. So I've got one row running down here, and then it goes to the middle there where it's spliced in. And then it connects up to the very end and we follow it, all these rows are hooked up in parallel. And lastly, the cable goes back to what one of the old fixtures was actually wired up to. So in this case, um, it'll just power up with the old um, lighting switch. All right, so now we'll take the old switches off. Pop those old wires off. Now, I'm do this temporarily. I'm gonna add this wire into our marette here. So we're gonna twist these all together. Okay, that's good. So now we're gonna join our new circuit into here. There. So now what we're left with is two traditional hot wires which will go to our traditional switch. So now we're going to install our traditional switch here. That's easy enough, like so. We'll kind of start these wires into the back a little bit as much as we reasonably can. Okay, okay, so we just gotta get this blue film off of this wall plate here. All right. Okay, um, so we just finished installing all the lights and well, it is uh, quite a bit brighter in here now. There's no more screwing around with simpleton light switches. It's all um, motion sensing now, which is quite fantastic. Uh, we only wired up the lights to one circuit. So we, what we did was we tapped the power from the ceiling there. And of course that also goes to that other light, which we haven't disconnected yet but you can just see how um, awful the quality of that light source looks in relation to the actual LED lights here. And I still have um, this light here, 
And if I were to pull out um, this Lux meter here, which is an actual quality Lux meter, I got this on Amazon, we can read um, standing at roughly waist level, close to the light here, 68 Lux. That is actually illegal uh, in most parts of the world. I believe the mandatory minimum for like an office type space is around 350. Uh, so 60 is definitely inadequate. And if we were to take a look here now, I have to actually reset the range of the meter because it's so much brighter. We are now getting under the lights here, uh, roughly waist level, about 820 locks. If I were to go into the back corner by the bench here, uh, it's not entirely fair because this place is loaded up with cars now and those are gonna eliminate some of our light. But just measuring by the bench, in the prob what is probably the darkest corner of the room, uh, I'm getting 520 locks. We waste level, we get 740 locks. And uh, one of the distinct improvements um, we've noticed thus far is um, working on vehicles, particularly doing jobs low down or underneath stuff. Uh, it's a massive improvement. Before you'd be clamoring around with a cheap LED shop light that just wouldn't be performing. Um, we actually, we've taken to using our spare shop light here, which we couldn't fit into the plan because there's no equal way to put it. And we've taken to using this um, as an actual light to work on the car. So if I were to turn this on here, you can see that you can set it down wherever you want, generally, and it can make an excellent quality work light. Uh, now granted it's not as durable as some work lights, but it'll certainly do the trick. And if I were to take a measurement, real down low here, kind of in the shade, you know, just next to this uh, brake rotor here, we're seeing that we're actually getting um, three times the light down here in the shade, in this wheel well, than we were directly underneath the old fluorescent lights, which is quite um, ridiculous, to be honest. So there has been a, a massive improvement. Um, but yeah, this is a summary of what we've done. I think it looks pretty clean. We've mostly uh, just tapped these wires in the ceiling, three rows of nine. And with the two chips at the 45 degree angle within the lights, I believe that provides quite a bit of an advantage in working in spaces like this um, because the light is cast at an angle as opposed to mostly straight down. Anything's a hammer when you want it to be. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in attempting a similar project, you can find links to all the products I use below. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.